Click, buy, deliver with the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chairsin the Racing. Three, two, one, and welcome back to episode 74 of Chasing the Racing, and welcome back for a third time, a record third time, Mr. Christian Iden. How are we doing? The ever ruthless Christian Iden. Well, well, you only invite me back for a third time because I moaned because two wasn't enough on the last time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And for people that are li- listening in for the, maybe the first time or missed the other two, the first one was, I believe, episode 39, and that was called Frozen Testicles. And then the second time it was uh, 61 and Tight Sausage. Now, both of them are very sort of <laughs> similar sort of references. What's going on with the... Uh, I don't know. The, I think it's because Don chooses is... the names. That's what it is. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think that's a common denominator. Uh, believe it or not, it's not me. It's him that thinks about your tight sausage regularly. So it's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be dragged down under that bus. There but we go. <laughs> anyway, it, it doesn't feel like two minutes ago since you were last here. And it was just before the season started. We'll kind of, I I think we'd had a bit of pre-season testing and then and this season has literally flown over and we're we're both sat with a couple of days before the the final round and we're both in with a shout of uh, bringing our respective titles back to the the northeast so uh, i how are you feeling you know obviously a couple of days into brands hatch uh are you Oh, this like is how... just going to be a therapy session, this, isn't it? Here we go. Well, now, we got... you, two, you two talk through your feelings, girls. You know we what I mean? Could, we could be the only hope of the North East, couldn't we? I mean, up here, we're, well, we're, I'm, we're I'm, poor, I'm... we've all got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's bad up here. We could have two British titles by the end of the weekend. Oh, it is, we go, it is mad when you think there's... I think there's only me, you and Barry from sort of Newcastle that are at BSB. So uh, the fact that we've... Uh, you, you were doing the region proud anyway, and uh, we're classing you as an adult, adopted Geordie as well. So uh, you're pretty much a co-host after the third time visiting us. So yeah. you're, you're pretty, you're just on for the job. Chris is looking for a good replacement anyway. So it's uh, you better, you better book your ideas <laughs> up. And may I just say, I'm very impressed with a pair of you. Even he's done it. He's spinning the monster energy cans around, and something about a gross net profit. You know, do you want to talk through that? Well, we're just, we're just waiting for the sheets to roll in. Aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for the sheets. Still waiting. waiting, still waiting. waiting. So, so here we are. What day, what night is it? Tuesday night. About to go down to Brands. Let's talk through it. The pressure's building. The <laughs> pressure's building. I'm I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna throw you both well, under the bus here. You like like you see. You just kind of washed it off there. Me and Chrissy are both on a similar sort of schedule of what we're com- what we're aiming for. Chrissy's on the good side of it, as in he's <laughs> ten points to the good, and I'm on the bad side of it. I'm sixteen points to the to the bad, really. So. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, it's going to be an interesting weekend for both of us. Um, but in the same breath, though, you've got three more races. He's got one more. Yeah, which again is a nice advantage for Chrissy in his one because he's only got ten points to lose. Essentially, it's good, it's good from your point of view. The fact you're chasing, obviously, if it was a sixteen point gap and you only had one race to make it up, it's kind of unlikely. Where you know, it's. I mean, looking back in the final round of the BSB, it always seems to throw up surprises. Uh, you know, the the year when uh, Shaky and Haslam were going mm. at it, and then one of the both crashed. I think in the first race of the weekend, and you you never know what's going to happen. Even the year when Lowe's crashed out, when the year that he won, he ran it uh, crashed shaky. in the first first race, didn't yeah, he? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the year that Keo went and spanned himself, was he racing against Josh that year? It was there was one when it, or was it Shaky that year? And Keo broke his collarbone, mm-hmm. and then tried to ride or couldn't on the on the race day. Yeah. So it always throws up some interesting stuff, doesn't it? You know, and especially we were just talking about before, but like the last race of the season, everyone wants to prove a point. It's a bit weird this year because obviously it's been so condensed the championship mm-hmm. that it's almost like we haven't had a first round and a last round anyway. It seems so short; it almost feels like the start of the season anyway to me. Yeah. Um, especially I don't know like how you feel about it, but for me, like. This one week on, one week off thing. Like by the time you've unpacked the caravan, you're basically back in it to go to the next race. <laughs> We've literally just unpacked this studio in a, I a can mad smell hurry. It. I know. <laughs> mad hurry just to get the podcast done, and then it'll be getting loaded back up for ready like tomorrow or the next day. But uh, one thing we, we spoke about back in really March or whatever was the fact of it's it's with such a condensed calendar, consistency was is going to be the main factor. And the all of the top guys in superbikes this year, like yourself. Josh, uh, O'Halloran, Glenn, all being super consistent. I, I don't. You haven't had a DNF all year, have you? No. Um, when you yeah. think of it, you know. <laughs> 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 
It's all gone right. I told you that this was one's going to be called the flop. <laughs> We've got it already. Microphone issues. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't have a DNF, but I had basically as good as one. Uh, Silverstone, I finished 13th in race two. Because <clears throat> Silverstone, I had horrendous tyre wear issues. Right. And uh, the biggest problem with Silverstone is because we didn't realise that we, didn't, we had any tyre wear issues until we got to the race. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't actually catch the problem because we didn't realise there was a problem. Yeah. Um, so well, exp- Sorry, explain that to me. There'll be a lot of listeners thinking of that going, what the hell are you on about? So... In I, don't, practice, I honestly not, don't know that's the problem. Oh, no, no. I'm just meaning in practice, were you just regularly putting new tyres on? Or is this just no, a duff tyre? or Not a duff tyre because we had it in three races. There was a lot of people with tyre issues during the weekend. Um, but not once during practice and qualifying did we have any inclination we are going to have a problem. So I did a run on a tyre that was nearly twice race distance that looked all right. You know, and the times that I was doing were all right. Yeah. And normally the race tyre is better because um, what kills tyres quite a lot is heat cycles. Well, certainly kills Pirelli's quite a lot. So obviously in practicing qualifying, you do a lot of heat cycles on your tyres because you come in, change some, go out, come in. So the tyres get hot and cold and that's really bad for them. So actually you tend to find that in a race they last longer. So the first race, which for us is shortened because we have three race, three races on a weekend, but the Saturday race is always a, I don't know, a few percent shorter. So it's like three or four laps shorter. Hmm. So I had an issue in the first race and lost a few places on the last few laps knowing that then we went to Sunday's races and they were going to be five laps longer, so I was really in trouble. And I was. So I'd hoped it was going to just a bit of a duff tyre in the first one, and that's all it was, because we had no problems on the before. Yes, I. Got into Sunday's race, and I dropped, I think I dropped seven places in the last two laps. So that's really, really nailed me for the for the championship. And so that Silverstone was the first round, is that correct? Second. No, no, Donington Second. Donington Donington was the first one. That's yeah. right, yes. Right. It, going back to, like, right at the beginning of the season, started off pretty good, you know. All through testing and, like, practice, qualifying, it, you and Josh didn't seem to really have the pace, but as soon as the race came, you you both came through together. <laughs> and uh, and obviously, That's great a, racing. I suppose they are teammates, and it's a it's sign of a good team. So. <laughs> well, no, I, to be fair, I had no pace whatsoever. Yeah, and, I, and I honestly didn't think I was going to have any. I'd qualified... Ninth or even eleventh, I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. It was third or fourth row, um, which, to be honest with you, was about as far up as I'd been the whole way through pre pre season testing, and the whole way through that weekend, I was nowhere, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I was just hoping and praying that once I got into a race, which I tend to find happens with me, um, that I would find my my mojo, and I got a good start, got away, and I was in the top four or five, and I was like, oh, this is all right, this, and I and I. <laughs> Finally, after since February when we well actually I got I first got on the bike in December, so since December until when we actually started post COVID ish. Was that was that Teesside? By the way, for people who haven't listened no. to this, that was a, that, like, he, he he took a Ducati, a poor bird Ducati around Teesside. <laughs> but anyway, listen to the previous episode yeah. and you'll be able to catch up on that. But that was mind blown. Anyway, sorry, continue. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> that was the first time. So I was just hoping and praying that that was the case. But actually, I was trying to stop myself from being negative about it because actually when I first um, signed for a, a factory supermoto team I did an Italian championship race the week before the first round of the world championship at the same track and didn't score a single point in the regional championship and I mean I was horrendous and I went out and won the GP the next weekend so there's something in my brain that clicks or changes <laughs> when you have to do something and obviously I didn't deem that Italian championship as being Im- important enough but it's not that I didn't try, and it's the same that I don't not try during all testing and practicing and qualifying and whatever. Mm-hmm. You just, just find something on a Sunday. I just find I just find myself more relaxed in a race. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Sorry, so, go for it. So super... much more relaxed. So <laughs> I'm, I, once I got in the race, I was like, oh, thank God for that. I'm actually okay. You know, yeah. I was... I was thinking I'd lost my speed. I was like, oh my God, you know, like this is a... Well, I, I remember following testing and obviously you can't extrapolate too much from, you know, pre-season testing on where where everyone's going to finish in the first race. But I remember seeing you down, it was like something like 19th or 20th and thinking like, w- I wasn't expecting that. And then... Nothing same was I. Yes. <laughs> same in practice. Or birdie. And then qualifying. And I was think I was like, obviously willing you on and hoping that you would find something. But then when I seen the race and I could, you, you literally followed Josh through on the first race, didn't you? And you, yeah. you both ended up right near the front and then uh, from there it kind of set the set the bar and um i just i I just want to know did you just say to paul don't worry paul don't don't stop crying (laughs) 
I've got this thing called the click, son. So I, don't, I know I know I'm doing shite, and I know you're still paying me, but don't worry, the money will come. Don't you worry, to, to Paul? To be fair, I actually did. I actually messaged him after the preseason test at Donington, and I did. I did. You know, I was like, I'm really sorry. That was an embarrassing. Honestly, I was embarrassed by what I'd done in the test because really? I was I was honestly hanging it out as what I thought was the yeah. limit. Don't worry, P45's in the pool. So. <laughs> well, I wasn't far off P45, I was P18 and there's only 20 in it. So. I could have been P45 if it was 45 in the bloody race. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, well, just out of interest, what was, what, how was Paul with you then? He was honestly spot on. Like the reply that I got was very like supportive and he was like, be fine once we get racing. And that was exactly what I actually felt inside that's me. That's what you were or, telling yourself. That's, that's what I hoped to inside <laughs> me. That is what I was telling myself. And I was yeah. like, we'll be all right. But like I said... Once I then got to the race weekend and it still was not really much better, I was then thinking, oh, you know, like, this is bad. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Saturday afternoon, something clicked. And then from then on, I have actually then been able to actually help them to develop the bike how I like to ride it. Because before then, I was so far off the pace, not so far off the pace, you're talking half a second, but half a second is enough to not be able to give the feedback that you need to do. So only then could we start working, really. It was difficult as well... because, for example, Josh had back-to-back years on the Jakai, and obviously when he was talking about the like the chatter issues and stuff, it must have been difficult from your point of view to to you know what what was like chatter and what was just you getting used to the Jakai. It must have been difficult to sort of separate them two things out. And uh, obviously, Tommy Bridewell's another one so so quick last year, and then has been plagued with problems this year. It's, that must be a huge advantage because if they've gone on the old tyre, this whole new tyre thing is pretty new to me. You know, this whole brand new front product. Mm-hmm. But like Chrissy says, that thinking the thing about it right now, that seems like an advantage because you don't know any different as far as that Ducati's concerned. Because was it done it in last weekend? The Ducatis were miles behind. You were the only Ducati up at the front giving out the portions, weren't you? Which round was that? Uh, as you can tell, I follow this very I closely. <laughs> It's an advantage in terms of I don't know what they had. Yes, yeah. But it's still not an advantage in terms of the thing still <laughs> <laughs> knock me teeth out. Have, as you, I'm going have you struggled a lot more with the tyres? Like cons- I know you were on the BMW last year, but can you still differentiate what like the chatter issue from this year? No, because I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what it was like on the other bike. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have seen the data, and there was it, there was none. So I've got a really good data technician, and we do a lot of like back to back on what the what, what the squiggly was. lines look like and what they look like now mm-hmm. um but then the same when actually josh has <clears throat> mentioned a lot having the issue mm-hmm. but i actually said it on the on an interview the other day on tv my issue and his Hold issue on, you're seeing other people I you're seen... going over interviews how dare you sorry, can, can, <laughs> i am <can>. sorry <laughs> <laughs> they give me 30 <laughs> percent um, but what josh described what what we both describe is we call it chatter but what josh what it shows up on his data login is nothing compared to what I have. Really? Yeah, completely different. Mm. And is so, that just different riding styles or different setups? Or? I honestly don't know. So we we are trying to eliminate it. So Josh has much less of an issue if you look at it on a computer screen. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that he doesn't feel it as much as I feel it. Mm-hmm. But if you actually look at the data, his is negligible. So I do have a really big problem with chatter. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... <laughs> we didn't have it all weekend at Donington and it got to the first race and that's the first dry race and it suddenly reappeared. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's an issue, definitely. But it's the same for everyone, isn't it? So everyone's got the same tyres, so you have to overcome the issue. Yeah, that's it. And from this I'm trying to think the second round was that Snetterden? Yeah, I made him it wasn't Silverstone, Silver, was it? Yeah. Silverstone was round three, Snet was round three. Snetterden was obviously you, you went on to take your first British Super Bike race win and uh, that must have massively felt like a monkey off your back and uh, I remember I bet you got ruined on that evening. Didn't <laughs> I didn't do a race in the next day, didn't we? <laughs> well you nearly you nearly got ruined on that on the warm down. Oh, cool down that. What, <laughs> what the f- yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> about <laughs> well glenn parked his bike in front of me didn't he on for a start <laughs> oh congratulate <laughs> almost took your arm off for anyone that didn't see that yeah so there's there's a hairpin for turn two and as christian was celebrating and he kind of was looking behind glenn <laughs> came in his kind of offside and slowed down to shake your hand yeah. but you were looking like over your shoulder and basically as you turned around you you look like lost your foot and mm-hmm. you you, you would have to describe it as your arm basically went un- between the hugger and the rear wheel and it is a miracle that nothing seriously happened to be honest because uh, I mean you could have easily like lost a finger or got your arm trapped properly and f- yeah well I don't actually think they run a hugger 
I'm not sure because my arm did go in. <clears throat> so, like you say, I turned around to, to congratulate oh, for Josh to congratulate me because I really wanted him to do that. <laughs> so he had actually he had actually shook my hand once. I wanted to do it and to do it again. So <laughs> I turned around and waited for him a second time. And then when I looked forwards, there was like Glenn. I was like, and so I just ran clean into the back of him. And it is amazing now. Like he was rolling off a little bit, and I was rolling on the closing speed. Like how much different it is. So I sort of fell into the back of his bike. <laughs> thinking, and me... thinking the egotistic prick. Stop trying to shake me out. <laughs> but like everything goes slow motion, doesn't it? And straight away I, I had visions of, because the week before at um, Hareth, the two Sky VR46 yeah, bikes had yeah. done the same, Remember but they'd you... gone down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I honestly just could picture it. And I thought, oh, you dick, you've crashed. And you're like, I couldn't believe I'd actually crashed because it probably would have like, take the shine clean off a win wouldn't it yeah because <laughs> that's all that people would remember so my arm went into in between his wheel and the yeah the hugger that should be there or it's there wasn't one then yeah. and the the back of the bike and it, i sort of ended up leaning on it i could feel it getting really warm and but i was trying to like push myself up so i dug my elbow into the his tire, I guess. He's, he was still. He was trying to accelerate away. He thought his bike was breaking down or something. I think. For, so he was. For, for the listeners, let's have a guess at mile per hour. Total guess. Oh, it was only twenty mile an hour tops. It was nothing. But, but it's it, twenty mile an hour of a mo like a motorcycle wheel burning through your levers. Yeah, so well, he's trying to accelerate. Enough. He's got two hundred and twenty horsepower, and my arms going. Oh, please don't like that. <laughs> so I pushed once and couldn't. I couldn't right myself. So I thought I'm gonna have to really dig in. So I like engaged all my core muscles and I really pushed down, and it just came up and I was like. Oh, mint. I was all right. And it was just one of them. You try and chug it off, don't you? You just try and like... Oh, I've seen the, I seen the picture of your arm, though. You got like a proper blister, didn't you? Yeah, I got a good old burn on it that, that did blister up. And I actually... I, I broke my finger and it's been causing me a load of gripe. I didn't break it bad. It was like a hairline... In that incident? Yeah, in that incident. I got like a hairline crack through my finger. And it's been narking me ever since. Oh, cry me a bit. river, Look princess. At Look at it. It's red still. Oh, I, I, bless I, you. I break with that finger as well. <laughs> do, you, do you break with them too? Yeah, them two. Yeah, two, I break. Two two. I break with them, them two or th them three. Why would you do that? I think it was from. I don't know. I think it was from the days where you would like break and then you could feed the throttle back on with that one. So you oh, break. Have you ever done skills? That? No. Mm. Well, tricky. I think, I think this this thing, them two thing. If you did a grip test, I think them two fingers would be more powerful than them two, or there would be for me anyway. I don't know. Don't give me new skills to try at the last <laughs> round. <laughs> But, uh, he wants 25% if you win it though. <laughs> <so they're... laughs> and then we're kind of going through this season. So that was... Well, that, that win, the, the, the win that I did, I actually won it twice because I stopped reading my lap board because I was all peaking at life. And I thought that the second last lap was the last one. So I came round thinking, right, hit all your markers, you've got a lap to go. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited when I got round the last corner and in, tipped into the left and nobody dived up the inside of me. And I came up the start finish right and I'm like, why has she not got a flag? Like, where is that black and white flag? <laughs> and I was like, and I seen last lap on the board. I was like, oh, never. But then I hadn't read my board again. And I had like plus one and a half seconds, but I didn't realise I just assumed it was still plus no, because that's all I'd had all race. Mm -hmm. So I had the two laps, the longest two laps of my life, because the lap before was the longest lap of my life, because it was what I thought was the last lap. God, and then I'd done it again. <laughs> that's probably just maybe a good thing, though, isn't it? Instead of overthinking it. No, just it wasn't got... a good thing. It was yeah. horrendous. <laughs> Did it, it, obviously, you've been in BSB for years now. Was you, you'll have dreamt of the, that win for like for a long time? Was it sort of as you expected? Uh, no. A better, a, better a, or worse? A or? broken finger Much. and a burning arm. Yeah, so yeah, I don't think that was on the list. Much worse. Really? Just yeah. not the high that you expected. I, the I am. You, I am quite like I can get quite emotional about things, and I, I honestly, you know, when you. Been building up to something for so long and so many near misses and so much like heartache that everyone goes through. Yeah. And I was I, I was convinced that when I finally was able to win something, win a race in BSB, that it was going to be a big moment because it's mm -hmm. been a long time that I feel it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I, I crossed the line. I, I was did the whole like oh that was mint you know like and then I got to turn one. I was like right I've got two more races tomorrow. And that was it. And I think just as soon as you achieve something, you move on to the next achievement or the next goal. So it was it was almost like just ticking a box. You know, I was really I was almost underwhelmed by it because mm -hmm. it was just like right. I think I think that's the difference between people that go on to win 
lot do uh, you know like um, multiple winners and people that to have like one big blowout and then they fit people who have one big blowout they feel like they've like achieved what they've set out to and then there's kind of that's it and they kind of lose that drive where people you know like Rossi yeah how on earth can you win that many titles and still and have then that just, hunger and then go out testing at Valencia yeah. the next Monday and be you know fully focused on the next year mm-hmm. but um so I think that that's a good trait but it's it's interesting obviously because like people like myself that are sort of still dreaming of that day and you know like working towards that day yeah i can understand it but it's it's kind it's of al- it's almost like just achieving one one step on the it's more like one step on the yeah on Both your way up the mountain back. to get to the top of the mountain whichever yeah. your end goal is mm-hmm. and i did think that it was going to be more than it was mm-hmm. and it honestly it really wasn't it was just like right okay yeah. two but more tomorrow do you reckon that was a little bit of lack of atmosphere as well Probably. Probably less, less of a crowd, less people. Let, if there was you know, fifty thousand yeah. people there and we, yeah. and, and I was, I was sort just, of like upset about not upset, but it's like I didn't have either. My parents weren't there and stuff like that. They, yeah. they've basically followed me through racing since day dot, you know. So it's kind of like that's yeah, unfortunate that's I mean, because of the like, situation yeah. and like. Were they, were they not there because of the COVID or just for other reasons? Yeah, it's harder for them to be there. So yeah. we're yeah, struggling with passes. Obviously, BSB aren't allowing many people in, so you've got to have a good reason, this, that, and the other. So, yeah. Um, yeah. My mum actually came the following day. She managed to get in on the on the Sunday, um, and I didn't win anything. So that was a wasted, <laughs> wasted, wasted journey. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was just a shame. After all, you know, all that time and stuff, they followed followed me through racing for all that time, and it's just like literally. Mm-hmm. Text message. It's the same way. I don't know if you've seen Petrucci's interview, but it was the uh, BT oh, captured a the... BT captured a mega moment at the weekend because just before he, he did his proper BT um, BT interview, someone passed him a phone and it was his mum on FaceTime, and it's just that. He, he Put told... your clothes on. <laughs> You're on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> he totally forgot that the cameras were there, and he was just like, it was just him and his mum, and he was like, uh, obviously talking Italian, but he was. Um, he was just, yeah, just like thrilled, and he was asking her if she should watch the race, and she was like, "Cause I did, you like stupid," and <laughs> and, uh, and you, you can just tell you. And afterwards, he explained that is similar as Mam had been with him the whole time, and she always drives still a man, but for this one year, she hasn't, and he won the race and all that type of stuff. But uh, no, I think that's really interesting. interesting. Well, have you like? Uh, sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last pr- two previous episodes with you. Have you ever like? You must have won. Stock thousand or stock six hundred. I or... never did stock that. Well, I did one race stock thousand. I did Super Sport for a few years. I'd, I'd won a few rounds of, of Super Sport. Right. So you are, no, just <coughs> when you say BSB, you see a lot of people collectively put BSB as a bundle. I know what you're saying. The yeah. British Superbike race no, is a separate I'd, I'd, race. I'd done. It's... I'd done two years of Super Sport and won a good few. Ra- not loads, but I'd won some races at that. So I'd. Was that a bigger moment for you then? Obviously, more crowd. No, just. Um... Uh, you see, I, actually, I think, no, I think, I think my first super sport win was way bigger. Yeah, way, way bigger. It's because um, the same for you, surely. Hold on. My first ever race win, which was at a club race, I, funnily enough, I had snetted, and that was by far the best feeling I've yeah. ever had in my life. And like that, uh, like Hold on, so winning you... this year hasn't come close to that. Even though like there was nobody there, and it sort of was meaningless really to anybody else. But to me, it was like exactly. It's well, what it means to you, though, isn't it? Yeah, and mm. it's. Oh no! It's, I'm, I'm just picking his brains now, so it's a bit like you know that. So, well, that um, Triumph Triple Challenge was a support series. Yeah. And to be fair, that was the equivalent now to the Chicago Tri Options, yeah. wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So when you won that, when did you see yourself getting a proper race win at British level? Was it that Stock Thousand? Stock Thousand, yeah. Mm-hmm. Had to have been, and that was Donaton last year on the Kawasaki one. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it? Yeah. So that right. was a bigger moment there. So now you're going to have to win at the BSB level now. God, it, you've well, got it's, a busy it's, it's timetable. All, it's all kind of <laughs> expectations, isn't it? And I suppose going into this year, you'll, you'll have kind of known that a race win more is coming, but it was just a matter of when type of thing. So I, I bet it sort of felt a, as much of a relief as it did, like sort of the... I think it was more of a relief than anything else. It was more like... Oh, yeah. And you it proved was, yourself. It was more, and... Almost I was able to breathe out and like that was... And I was actually happier for... I wasn't really that fussed about me. Um, it was more for like, not just Birdie as well, but for everyone who's ever had any faith in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To actually, you know, all my sponsors and, and yeah, for Birdie as well, because it, it was a big thing for him to, to put me on that bike and to, at round two, to already have stood on the top step with his bike and stuff. And, and in a race where I, I led from the front and it wasn't like a strange race in any way. I was, yeah. I was happy in the way it happened. So I was, I was almost more relieved for him. <laughs> than I was for myself as is well. It, just on that, is there anyone like in the background that maybe you know isn't like close family or whatever that is um, 
like that you really think of when you when you talk about that who's someone who's like totally believed in you all the way through and like maybe helped you through your darkest sort of times is there anyone that sort of fits that ticks that box to be fair for me it's just all my family have always been right behind me and it's through you know what it's like all through a racing career for the pair of you you go through so much don't you Mm -hmm. you know like and you you lose way more than you ever win (laughs) and that is how racing yeah (laughs) if you think of every single race there's 30 riders on the grid 29 are going to lose so there's only one person at the end of each race weekend that's going to go home with a you know as a winner essentially so there's so many ups and downs and there's way more downs than ups so i've had great support from my family anyway um but i also have a lot of very good loyal sponsors that have been with me for a good few years and they don't actually want for nothing other than to see me do well yeah and and i do really appreciate that and it's nice for for that sort of thing to happen. Tell really. you one thing we've kind of <laughs> skipped over that just quickly like your take on uh, the Irwin Brooks incident at the first round. Do you have a particularly strong opinion on that or I don't have a strong opinion on it. I think um I think BSB got the decision correct. <clears throat> I think it's a difficult decision to make. I think the at the time there was a lot of decisions being made at MotoGP and World Superbike, so it almost seemed that race control was being very uh like decisive yeah just getting involved in the racing a lot more but Mm -hmm. it wasn't just in bsb they were doing it so it almost as a collective racing was getting yeah yeah, as a sport we've seen so much thing with like track um limits which gets frustrating to watch so penalties penalties being imposed like zarco and aspargaro and all those strange things that happened so it sort of came at the time when there was a real spate of it Mm -hmm. so that decision to be fair if it was a one-off and there wasn't all these other things going on, probably wouldn't have made too much interest. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, my point of view is that Josh did know he was there, hence why he gave it a big load of gas and lost the rear. And it was only unfortunate that he rolled off at the point where Andrew came through, so he'd unloaded the front of the bike, and Mm -hmm. he just, Andrew clipped him at the point that the bike was unsettled. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing would have happened. Um, It is a place that you pass, it's a, it's a common place for passing because I know that one of the one of the arguments was not many people pass there, but I actually think it's a very common passing. It's place. a race track you can pass anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, but you know, it's I, I didn't see too much issue with it. To be fair, it was just unfortunate that one rider went down and one didn't. Yeah, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, fair, right, fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah, totally fair enough. And uh, I'm I'm just trying to think of the sort of big talking points through the year. So from after Snedden, you've you've kind of always been there and thereabouts all year, really. When you I had a look at the points the other day, and there was only. There's not many superbike riders that have finished every race. I think there's yourself. The only race Josh didn't finish was that one mm-hmm. that he, he got knocked off. Jason's um, finished in all of them, I think. I think, yeah, Jason's been pretty consistent. And after that, there's people who have the odd DNF. Yeah. And But when you look, it's the top sort of four or five riders have so, been so consistent this year. Do you know the points off the top of your head? Like, where, where's... Who's Josh, where? Josh, is then leading. I'm 16 down. Glenn's 18... Uh, Jason's either 19 or 20, I'm not sure. And, and, and then and Taz is 35 or 40, I'm not sure. 40 ish. So, with three races, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's plenty to play for. Oh, isn't plenty there? to play for. Plenty mm-hmm. to play for. And I think, the con- like you said about before about the consistency thing, I actually think because it's been a sh- condensed year, mm-hmm. there's not been the same. We weren't sure how it was going to be, did we? we? We weren't sure it was going to be like flat out mental and everyone going nuts or people actually trying to play the long play the long game in a short championship but it has been both (laughs) no it's been been been, people have been way more people have been calmer i think like qualifying hasn't been as clean nuts you don't you haven't had the same people who just go absolutely bonkers and qualifying has been a bit more normalized you see that the grid tends to be where the finishing places are whereas previously you've you get these people who can do one one lap wonders um and you didn't really get any strange results at round one so I don't think you're going to get too many strange results at the last round. Mm. Mm. So I actually think that people have been... They've calmed it down a little bit because they know that they have to score mm. consistently. I'd, looking back on your superbike career, this year's been so much more consistent than what you've ever been in the past. 
has there been a obviously i know you've changed teams but has there been any other changes like sort of have you approached the race any differently have you maybe like got a, a coach or a psychologist that's helping you or something or uh, he moved a blade and he had to harden up a little <laughs> so you got <laughs> nick yeah, with I, a I, slipper I, I am a bit of a soft shite yeah, I'm a better, better man up a little yeah <laughs> <laughs> these northeast lads <laughs> I have to sleep in the shed if I don't get at least 40 points a weekend. <laughs> who, is it Nicola or Hugh who enforces that? <laughs> we all know the answer to that, Chris. We all know the answer to that. Nicola enforces it and Hugh's back up. <laughs> um, no, do- nothing, nothing changed really. Just uh, every, I've, I've got a crew chief, an Italian fella, and uh, some things we disagree on quite a lot, but every, before every race he always says, like, race by race, lap by lap, situation by situation. And to be fair, he says it be- before every race. And I actually quite like it. And I've sort of taken... And it, that I think that little saying has actually calmed me down coming into this re- race weekend. Because instead of me thinking a million one things before it, because like by now my head would be a, a jumble, it's more just like, well, don't worry. When we get to the race, we'll think about that race. And so would you, when, when we get into that lap, we'll think about that lap. Yeah. You would kind of set, give a massive amount of credit to your crew chief for that sort of change then? It's funny how just one little one little saying and just yeah. it just puts it in your head before the start of a race and I quite like that. Well, had, yeah. uh, Neil, when Neil Hodgson was on the podcast, he was talking about John Davies and he'd said uh, right at the beginning of his career, so, uh, John Davies had said to him, was it um, smooth, and, smooth and fast or something? Or something like that. It was something like smooth and fast and he said even when he was in world championships type of thing, he used to just like on the grid or whatever mm-hmm. just think smooth and fast. It was, it was something along those lines and I guess that's that's similar, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, and then I get I get loads of things on my pit board so Sam Neat who's on my pit board, he's got all these things made up so we've got all, like thumb emojis all different stuff. no it's just all different modes but it's aubergines not, yeah like <laughs> <laughs> what mode is that chris <laughs> well what mode's that then i don't know <laughs> pass <laughs> you see the sexual deviant yeah jesus <laughs> wept that means portion coming <laughs> Yeah, I think we've beaten off the track here, lads. He's, he's, got all sort, he's got all sorts of ones made up, so we've got all different modes, you know, like they have mapping, don't they, in, in MotoGP that comes up on the dash. Well, I've got all modes, but it's nothing to do with the bike, it's to do with me, so he, he's trying to control me as well. Because after the Silverstone right. thing, when that was just basically being a throttle jockey, and it just ruined the tyre, and it ruined a load of points, really. So mm-hmm. I'm just trying to calm it down. But the consistency thing probably comes from because not having to override the bike so much um previous years i've had a lot of dn mechanical dnfs as well not so many crashes really yeah um but a lot of mechanicals and mainly the crashes that i've had in the past <clears throat> i remember for example like Aston last year i was convinced i was going to crash because i didn't want to finish further down the field so i just pushed to the point that i knew i was going down and i did mm. so when you feel a bit more comfortable and confident on the bike then it's easier isn't it you can yeah. Not that you ride within yourself because you don't, but it just you've got that little bit of margin. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah I'd, no, I'd say to- that's a little bit of it. Totally get that. What about uh, in terms of your relationship with Josh? Was when we spoke to Josh, we were talking about his relationship with uh, Scott Redden, and we he was describing how not so much at the beginning of the season, but very quickly it sort of developed into two sides of the garage and there was there wasn't it was almost like two teams within the same team if you like has it uh, for you and josh do you sort of share data and or is it okay do you just sort of your side of the garage and his side we share data so the data goes that's nothing to do with me and josh whether we are or aren't friends so that's <coughs> friends friends my friends <laughs> oh, not my friends oh my god <laughs> and he just watch in between oh, us why not and uh because it's shite. It You're missing out. out. No, I'm not missing, out. missing out. I'm not missing out. It, it's far from it. Right. Anyway, well, let, a little let's... box set. Little... No, no, no. I'll, I'll box some it. Never mind box setting. Right, come on. Let's we'll get have that. an in between is and chill night, me and you, and you'll we'll, you'll enjoy. I'm it. the big spoon. Anyway, let's okay. continue. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the the data gets shared regardless. Um, <clears throat> my relationship with me and Josh has definitely changed as the season's gone on. Definitely. Um, not on not from my side i was surprised when it when it changed uh, so. do you think maybe josh didn't think of you as a th- as much of a threat to start with and then when you were winning races and dishing some portions <laughs> that sort of changed or 
I'm glad you said it because that's basically what I think's happened. To be fair, right? Um, and it's interesting that he said for, we did a we did a, um, a Zoom thing for the top five us the other day, and we were asked about teammates, and Josh had said, and his actual quote was basically saying that it's funny because he always starts off with a good relationship with teammates, and it always seems to go away. Mm. <clears throat> I don't see it's that hard to understand that there's one common denominator in that, and that's probably that. Maybe it's it, something from his side a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's such a difficult sport in that respect because it's such a, a, a sort of a selfish, you know, I mean, teammates for, is the for, wrong for, term. For it is racing. the wrong term. Yeah. Is, you don't have it, to be mates. Do no, no, you? no, 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 no. It's not even that. Is you're competing against each other. 100%. You know what I mean? You're not. You're not like a bunch of well, you know competitive sailors are you on mm-hmm. the same boat thing and if we don't work together this thing's going to sink mm-hmm. you are out to absolutely rip chunks out of each other yeah. when you think of no yeah. like Carl, Fo- up, Carl Fogarty always you know used to say like he used to have to hate his rivals and it was all part of the race and, and it's nothing personal at all and like you said when you were last on the podcast about um, what Josh was like pers- we, and obviously we sort of got to know him but we sat and it was like three hours or something that podcast and th- like that was the first time I've ever spoke to him thoroughly enjoyed it and it was it was kind of like josh away from it was away from the garage away from the race and, and it was it was almost like the person type of thing but when it comes to racing it's it's your job at the end of the day and it it's each each person's different and obviously he he does a good job and gets the results so if that's what he needs to do to sort of to get to get the results then obviously it's working for a minute i want to tread carefully on this yeah, sure, subject I, I, a little bit just it's going out after the after the race weekend anyway, so it's not like I'm going to try and... Or is it? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe. This is live. <laughs> right? This is live. It'll probably anyway. go out before the weekend. Right, mm. well... <clears throat> so, they get, so get the mind games in now. No, well, that's what... That's what it's, it's nothing to do with mind games. It's just being... True. Yeah, I was... I listened quite closely to the, to the podcast that you did with Josh. Yeah. And it's very interesting, and some of the things, it's really, really insightful, and I did actually really enjoy it. Um... And then, but I do also think quite strongly that Josh came on here wanting to tell a story, and it was very much a, a narrative that was set. And any time that there was any interjection, you got cut quite short, and the story continued. Um, so I think that everything that Josh does is very sort of calculated. Yeah. He has a reason for doing things. He didn't decide suddenly that he wanted to come on the podcast just through the goodness of his own heart. I don't think it was to tell a story, mm-hmm. as much as I'm sure he loves you two guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Chrissy. From, and from, well, Chrissy. From yeah. that point of view as well, I think it was a. It, when you're saying it's a calculated thing, it was very well calculated. Oh, 100%. And like, I really, and enjoyed, and it, really enjoyed it. And he's really enjoyed it. For the third Do time, you? so fair play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm more calculated. <laughs> <laughs> Three times more calculated. The, the amount of uh, positive comments. Uh, Do you know what? The amount of like, comments. Comments on YouTube, Twitter, uh, that have, have yeah. you know said like how much they thought he was you know X uh-huh. X Y and Z, and like they've t- actually changed their opinion and think he's not, like in that top bloke now. So obviously it was a good you know a good uh, sort of decision or career move or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah I, I, I really don't want to speak bad of Josh because I've got the utmost respect for him. Yeah. Like as a racer, mm-hmm. um, I'm just surprised how it changed a little bit. And it's, it is strange. Like if you <laughs> just as a very simple little bit of thing if you're bored if you go back to anything from round two onwards he's not mentioned my name once in a single interview um once Mm -hmm. so it's a very strange little dynamic that we've got going on um i did we had we didn't have words but we had after the third race at alton uh he beat me he won the race and i finished second and uh, we were waiting for the the post-race interview with eurosport and um I just asked him if he was going to start talking to me again um, because I just wanted it to be clear the air a little bit. There'd been a strange a strange little dynamic going on and he just didn't want to even say hello to me. So I wanted that gone, really, so I just asked yeah. him flat out. And, um, yeah, the answer, the answer that came out of his mouth was not if you carry on passing me. Now, I know he didn't really mean to say that exactly, but sadly for him, that's what came out of his mouth. And I think that probably was what was in true. the back of his mind. That probably <laughs> yeah. was the true... Uh-huh. The true thing. Um, he, s- he stopped speaking to me at Silverstone. Um, so once he said, not if you carry on passing me, he then retracted the comment a little bit and he went, well, I mean like the race three at Silverstone when Bridewell passed the pair of us because we ran each other deep. Um, 
But again, I didn't really believe it because he'd stopped speaking to me at the start of Silverstone, so I don't see how he stopped speaking to me because of a pass I made on yeah. Sunday afternoon. Yeah. So yeah, things have changed, but we don't we don't not get on. Mm-hmm. So it's not like uh, it's funny because um, I do a bit of track track tuition with Whitam and one of the Eurosport um, people had overheard our conversation, so Whit was straight on to me going, "Hey, you and Josh were having an argument. What was it about?" And it it wasn't an argument. It was genuinely just a little conversation and it got cut cut short anyway because um we had to do our interview so there is honestly no bad feelings as far as i can tell I, yeah josh is his own character mm-hmm. and i also take that with full understanding because he's he is how he is yeah and uh, i actually respect him more for that so you know mm-hmm. on track i respect him 100 percent i was gonna say the, the... we don't have to be best mates and no. it's strange because we have very similar interests and Mm-hmm. and <laughs> jobs and stuff so the, the racing's been especially between the two of you has been like extreme like considering you're both going for the same goal and you you're so close on track like it's been very, i think very respectful yeah 100 like, really, yeah. obviously there was that i do remember seeing that thing and you were both battling for a position and both ran wide and bride well got but and there was like a few there was a few passes that at um at snetterton mm-hmm. and it was kind of do you know when a, do you know when uh, lobsters are fighting for like a hierarchy <laughs> and it, and obviously there was you out of two, all the predators in the world, lobsters. Chris, no, no, it, lobsters are actually a really uh, right in, color. You know that 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 uh, lobsters are a real good analogy because they, they work very similar to uh, humans. But anyway, used to work going for the hierarchy of mm-hmm. the uh, who's number one in the team, mm-hmm. and it was very obvious when, when he wins when the when championship, Brooks, he's going to go. I am the top lobster. Top lobster. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> When when Brooks was overtaking you, you weren't holding back with your passes, and mm. you were firmly establishing that you you're not there to follow him for second. You're there to try and win yourself. And uh, I, obviously, it's interesting just watching from a from afar of like how that's went on. But yeah, I would say like the racing's been like at the front of BSB full stop. The racing's been really really fair. And I think it has. I think the clean. racing's been very clean so far. It, it, there's a possibility it's going to change a little bit this weekend <laughs> but I don't think it will that much because I do think that everyone's got that much re- wh- whatever everyone feels off the track I think everyone's got a lot of respect for each other on the track and I do think that you know what it's like in bike racing it's not a safe sport mm-hmm. so you have to have respect even if you really hated someone you would struggle to put a dangerous move on someone just because you just wouldn't do it Yeah, you know you're not messing about you've you got know. so much to lose yeah, but no, 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 not just injury side of it. It's like you've got to think about championship points. It's like that. Let's be, let's go back no, to it. Like just, Andrew Irwin, you know, he's made put... some, he's made some rider decisions, mm. good, bad, or indifferent, or anything like that. But the fact is, he's gone for opportunities, and he's been punished, and both not by race control, but quite frankly, socially. Yeah. Hasn't he? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's also that side of it. Yes, the respect and obviously you'd struggle. But in the same breath, there is a lot more risk than reward about duffing someone up, period. Yeah. There's especially, there's def- especially at your level when you've got Eurosport cramming up your arse <laughs> waiting for, a, well, quite frankly, a fuck up. Yeah. Has, has there ever been any sort of team meetings where I was, like you're both going into the championship? Who's one top and two lobster at, today? <laughs> <laughs> one, you, you know, one and two at the moment. Has there be, ever been team discussions of obviously if any like you must not take each other out type of thing or no? Nah. Is that just... Bird, Birdie gets really nervous, really really nervous. That's bad. So, <laughs> he, he has mentioned a few overtakes that we've done on each other and, and uh, he must get a kick out. And of that. he tells us that he's that he's. His butt cheeks are nipping at the time, and I tell him not to worry. But That's, I think he half enjoys it as well. He's got, I'm not being funny, but if you know, if he wanted people like safe and away from each other, he would pick a fast lad and a slower lad, wouldn't he? He gets the two top. <laughs> he did. He just didn't realise what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. But there's no point going out there. He, he's putting the best entertainment on on the grid, and he wants to win. And that's what happens when you go for wins. Yeah. Yeah. No, but fans. there's been there's been no no discussions really. Nothing, mm-hmm. and nothing coming into the last round. There's been nothing, which oh, I don't right. expect it to be either. Yeah. Can I ask you something that you probably just won't answer? But are you getting phone calls of anyone else at this point of the season? I'm just like curious. You know, do a rival like calls? Next, next year? Next year, you know, other opportunities. When, I thought you when, meant when, off when, rivals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm> so <laughs> there you are. No, no, but I meant like I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a Porsche. No, on, on that topic, have you signed a? a uh, you were on a one-year contract, weren't you? Yeah, one-year yeah. contract. Next year sorted, or is it... Um, 
I don't really know what's happening. Um, yeah. I would really like to stay where I am. That's pretty obvious, and I've yeah. I've made yeah. that pretty clear to Birdie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm. I, I would say he's quite happy with how things are going. I hope he is. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I can gather, he's pretty happy. I would absolutely love to stay. Um, this year has been, regardless of what happens this this weekend, or last weekend, depending when you listen to it. <laughs> um, then I still think it's been good, but not a. It's still not been a proper championship. It's still been a shortened, curtailed, ah, strange well, the, situation. Nah, it's all about bollocks. It, you know what I mean? It's a championship, nonetheless. I know. But what I mean is, I would, I would love to have twelve rounds because you're greedy. Well, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, it just right. seems like such a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. It almost feels like the journey hasn't quite started, and it's nearly already at the end of this year. Mm-hmm. That's how mm-hmm. quick ah, and strange but, it feels. But so, for someone who's not in BSB, um, looking from the outside, looking in, it is by far been the best racing i've ever seen like championship wise you haven't even had a like a showdown and you've hasn't this is close, to be that hasn't had to be and this is closer than a showdown anyway it, it's phenomenal entertainment and watching wise it's absolutely fantastic yeah, well you'd never know who you're racing against for a start i mean there's been some people who've been i mean how I fast for example how fast kyle ride was at certain rounds and actually to be fair has been the whole time just been a bit unlucky with certain things but yeah and you know buckens up there and then sometimes he's not and lee mm. bob's always nipping at heels you know there's so many riders that can mm. Is there any, that can put it to you. Who's been your biggest surprise this year in terms of like outperformed or underperformed? <laughs> that's a bit harsh. That, 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 that's a well, bit go, of a go spot, over, Overperformed, <clears throat> and is there anyone that you've thought? But yeah, I wasn't expecting them to not, be passing. Not them. overperformed, but I, I, I mentioned two of them then, really. But Kyle has been really, really impressive. Yes. Um, I spend a lot of time with Kyle because we coach together, and yep. I enjoy spending time with him because. <clears throat> The way that he looks and the way that he acts is actually very different. Not, I don't mean that in a bad way, but he's like quite a. What's his look? He's like Eminem. Yeah, he looks like Eminem, but he's very, but he's properly analytical and like he really, really is, and he knows his his racing inside out. Yeah, and um, and the way he thinks through his races is very, very impressive. He's unbelievably consistent. I've only ever seen him on a pit bike track. You know what I mean? Even on a pit bike, he can go within a tenth of his time. Yeah. And it's just like you say, he's so, so I think, I think he's been very, very, very impressive. And, yeah. um, especially and at Silverstone. Especially at Silverstone. Um, and then another one, it's a li- been a little bit more under the radar, but I think that Lee Jackson's had a, a superb season. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the odds on him getting more points than Danny by the end of the season, you would have got brilliant odds. And yeah. he's, he's has, although Danny's shown... You know, glimpses of excellence. Mm-hmm. Lee's been so much more consistent, and is uh... when when I'm when I'm riding with Lee Bob. Um, what I what I've noticed, and it, I, may, I may be wrong, but it just seems like he's uh, he's very in control of his bike, yeah, and in control of the situation, which means that once he unlocks that little bit extra, I think he has got even more to give. Mm. Just when you he's watch him scr- on track, scratching. yeah, he's not scratching and he seems to be able to put the bike where he wants even when he's at the front of the field, you know, like, so it's almost as if he's got a little bit in hand. Yeah. Now, sometimes you ride with people and they are actually hanging it out and you don't realise, you always think that the other person's got a bit more in hand. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it just, when, I, when I've ridden with him at a few rounds, he's been, he's been impressive. And from being on, on track with the other lads, <laughs> what do you put the the demise of the BMWs and superbikes to... Obviously, they've, there's quite a lot of BMWs and they've all consistently struggled this year. You'd have to say sort of either Brad or Luke Mossy's been the best out of them. But the likes of, you know, Hickman's a safe bet for the showdown every year and he's been nowhere this year. It's not, it's not worked for him at all. Barbara, it, so. Barbara <laughs> has been nowhere. I mean, but Hector, the, the, the world's best caravan, wasn't even anywhere at Donington, was he? So, What's the world's his, best caravan? Oh, he's just, he's a full on, just hitches on, doesn't he, in qualifying? You ever seen him? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god he puts his safety catch on he looking, puts his, plugs into the electric he's away with you oh, he's horrendous the trouble, the trouble with Hector Barber is he forgets he's getting a tow so sometimes he then passes you and then like loses his head really? so yeah he really? tries to get a tow in qualifying and then, struggle, then he outbreaks you and then he's like where do I go <laughs> He struggled so much this year, hasn't he? And he, I mean, he's a you know, he's a class rider, but for some reason, all of the BMWs just yeah. struggled. Hickman to me is obviously for most is the biggest surprise. Yeah. Um, Speaking of surprises, do you know where he's going next year? He's announced he's got a new ride for someone. Come on! I think well, 
I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't know anything like underhand or not underhand, but I don't know anything about anything. But I would assume it's a very, it's all the similar setup. It's just going to be rebranded or renamed something different. Right. It's all is as far as I can no, but that's deduce what, but, from it. And but, I would, I would assume that it was going to be on a different bike. Mm, interesting. No, because that's that's what brought my <laughs> like my brought my question forward. You know, at what point do the the cards start shuffling? I know it's all behind closed doors these conversations, but it's interesting when you think. How many deals actually get sorted even before the final round? Is, is Brooksy signed for next year or is he still? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, this year, I think, has been a bit more strange because you've not had that sort of by the time you get to showdown sort of time of year, that's when the conversations are starting. And I think everyone's been almost that busy that time, with getting yeah. through the racing. that Things haven't really been as fluent. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The Most of the signings are actually... Um, some of you, I don't, not the, not the biggest of the names, if yeah. you know what I mean. Not the, not the top ten, for example, in the series. The ones that have signed up already. Not yeah. the top lobsters. Been, uh, yeah. Well, no. Normally, what happens is it starts from the the top lobsters that get signed up, and it filters its way down. Uh-huh. That's the normal way that racing goes. So, yeah, of course it is. For example, last year Brooks was the was the only, the top rider that was going to be staying in the championship. So once he found his place, then it sort of filters down who's left, and then it goes. It sort of works its way down, and and you find your place in your in the team's pecking order. Yeah. Whereas this year, <clears throat> a lot of the the teams that are a bit further down the rankings for whatever reason seem to have signed up their riders quite early on. Mm. So it's actually not the top ten sort of riders that have been signed up already. It's mm-hmm. it's the. It'll also yeah. be interesting to see if any any world two bike riders or sort of ex Moto GP <laughs> riders come down because yeah. you know there's there's possibilities of you know some moves and not not just saying that though have they actually in that when do they announce another calendar for the dsp <sighs> that's, another Boris, th- just, that's actually a really interesting point because i think there's a it's a bit of a delayed season coming next year oh i mean it would make sense wouldn't it of yeah. course it whether well, the climate we're in and all that jazz you know but it's no, also it's test seen. abroad testings there's a massive question mm-hmm. mark well, of course that, isn't no but, but like crmc uh thunder sport provisional um, effect, like obviously the lower club meetings, they haven't been able to confirm anything as such. But the well, see, but what it has shown this season is that the season can be run in very that's, difficult conditions, that's which thing, is very it? impressive. Considering at the beginning of this, it was very much Stuart Higgs was quite quite open about it. Going, if we can't do, you know, if we can't get any spectators in, we poss- possibly might not be able to do the full mm-hmm. full championship, even a, a compressed one. <laughs> but fair play to Stuart and all the team and everyone to be able to continue the championship because by round well meeting number three because they were classing you as dip like your class mm-hmm. sorry mm-hmm. as each race is around which is a load of crap I mean but you know it's like sponsors I mean ra- uh, racing's difficult I suppose racing, racing's difficult to the, well the sponsorship side's difficult to sell at the best of times but with not having any spectators yeah. it's, it's make, making the job so much harder and uh, I think the good thing about bike racing I think is people that are involved in racing and uh, sponsoring side there's a massive passion element you would you, you wouldn't really do yeah. it from a purely of a, from a pure business point of view it's maybe a dif- difficult sell where the likes of the main sponsors you tend to find the the owners of companies that that are doing well and mm. they love bike racing or they know <clears> someone or I get I mean that's a, that's a really really valid point in terms of if you actually think of pure branding on motorbike racing, it's very difficult to get the return from a pure branding perspective. One, because basically our billboards are far smaller. You know, like if you go to sponsor a touring car team, for example, you've got a massive car to put your logo all over. Um, but then, yeah, like you say, a lot of it is from a passion point of view. Um, but then those sponsors would then also like to be involved. So the fact that this year we've had such limited avail- availability to have anyone on site. So when those sponsors would like to come along and be not be involved as in actively involved, but be within the race atmosphere and you can't do, that's when it becomes difficult, mm-hmm. I think. So I do think it's been an amazing championship to get through, but I do think it'll struggle. For example, I know that obviously BSB's run this year with no spectators, but it must be a huge loss financially for be, them. It's it got to be at least a million quid on the gate each weekend. It's, it's got to be, isn't it's it? It's massive numbers, and then mm. everyone buys a burger, and everyone buys a T-shirt, and everyone... Mm. Do you know, it's... Sheets. 
Yeah, sheets after sheets on sheets. <laughs> 25%. Uh, 25%. <laughs> no, but the mad thing, while we're talking about the demise of motorsport, you know, it's um, Mervyn White stepped down from the Northwest, 200, mm-hmm. so someone's got a big pair of shoes to fill there, massive mm-hmm. pair of shoes. I wonder if, if we get in touch with Dishy Wishy, I wonder if he can uh, help help us out a little. <laughs> there we go. That's an inside joke, I have no idea about. There we go. Wishy Sunak, man, the, chancel- the uh, Chancellor. Oh, he hands stuff out for all sorts. I, 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 <laughs> loves it. They've just given they've just given nearly a million quid to Beamish Museum, man. Keep them running for the arts. Surely BS, for sponsorship. Surely BSB should be able to. No, like the Furlough Beamish scheme Museum, Ducati Racing. <laughs> yeah. a, man should, a, a man can dream. A man can dream. Uh, no, the all no. sponsor Vision. What is, what's that? Vision Track. So yeah. they do like um, camera systems and like GPS and all that for lorries, bait, or mainly for fleet vehicles. Mm-hmm. Team launch was well posh, wasn't it? Well posh. <laughs> Did you see Up that? At the shard. No, the shard in London. Is, is that the tallest, tallest building in London? I and don't know. I didn't dare look down. It, <laughs> there, there wasn't much above me, that's for sure. So Do you scared like, heights. I'm not keen on heights. Hmm. 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 No, just wondering. Do you know what? Do you know what? I don't like them because I have that. Um, I have that irrational thing where you know, like for example, if you walk past an iron, I have to touch it. And if I walk over a bridge, I'm scared. Do you know that I'm how many people off. are going to stop you racing this weekend? No, all your competitors are going to be putting hot irons out. Like, like you'll touch one, guarantee you'll same, touch like, one. You, like whenever you, if you walk across a bridge, and I, I get like this the, a fear that I'm going to jump, jump off, off the bridge. Really? Yeah. Not because I want to jump off the bridge, but just I'm. You think? Oh, I wonder. If... No, just I think my legs are going to do it. I'm like, oh, they're actually going to do it, and I have to keep walking and get yeah. away. So it's that worry <laughs> getting in the head of. <laughs> What about magpies? Is, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is very rich coming from me. But you need help. <laughs> <laughs> you never have those little irrational little things that you thoughts and no. Do you ever get it when you're racing? I, no, no, I, I get uncomfortable when when I get like an uncontrollable erection now and then. But it's about that. That's about the which is why you're always sweating. Uh, that, naturally, it's, it's sitting here. That's why the table's low. So occasionally, when you get a thud, that's me. <laughs> do you, do you uh, salute magpies? No, oh, don't so start me. That's not, from, that's not, not a thing. Is that a new thing now? He's not from the north. Yeah, yeah. There but we go. If, uh, uh, if Geordie see magpies and say, um, what is it? Good, af- good afternoon, Mr. Magpie, and salute them. I know people that do that. You're the lobster man. Anything can happen with him. So, <laughs> well, all right, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's, let's. Uh, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you think the t- Do you think the TT will go? Well, I read something the other day that it's cancelled. I don't know how much cock and bull that was. It's obviously can't be true yet because there's been no announcement. Well, they're making an announcement. <clears throat> uh, the Manx to make an announcement at in December. Now, and then I spoke to someone, like, that's a problem. It's like an ongoing rumour mill. Then someone says they're going to make an official announcement in March. But the last thing I read from Manx Radio was they're going to make a call in December about the TT. Just, in your in your opinion, with all this crap going on, do you think it's going to go? My opinion doesn't count for anything in this whole situation. Oh, don't be... Th- no, look, it's, but, look, no, it's you know give I mean? and take. You're right. is, Come on. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever felt like... I don't agree with something and there's nothing I can do about it. What do you mean the lockdown? The whole situation, yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know everyone's got a point of view and rightly or wrongly, but mine, I, it's the first time I've ever felt like almost, not an, yeah, kind of anxious about something because I know there's nothing I can do and you, you see things that are happening and you're like, I don't agree with that, what can I do about it? And the, the yeah, answer they, is yeah, nothing. We're, we're all helpless, but no, but as far as, yeah, I'm just, I really just want your opinion on it because me personally... I don't see why it shouldn't go ahead, is my opinion. Right. But that's only my opinion. Hmm. It's, a, it's an event on an island. It's not, you're not all close together, even if, yeah, even if you mean, were, it's... even if you were all packed together, I don't think anyone that is going to be affected by such a, a thing is going to turn up for fear of. As in like vulnerable people yeah. would stay at home. And exactly. Like, yeah. So, and then the second point is, is it's on a flipping I was going to say a great big island. It's not a great big island, but it's on an island big enough to house a lot of people. Yeah. So hmm. I don't see why it shouldn't go ahead, but I don't see why we shouldn't have spectators at, uh, at Brands uh, Hatch thing, and all sorts. I, I was down at Donington at the but, weekend at the, the, um, No Limits, yeah. and it was so nice finishing a race, going down Crane and Kids and people waving, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> there was maybe you know maybe a couple hundred or whatever around the track, but it was so, so nice to like wave, uh, rather yeah. than you know, wave at marshals, but like it was so nice to like get a bit of you know clapping and photographers out and but about. But in, in club racing... You are quite egotistic, aren't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Oh, they're all here for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to lower my zip a bit. There. Zip a bit but I think in club racing, it's seen a lot more people through the gate, spectators, because... Because they can't it's restricted. Yeah, they, it, it's become well because they can't go to the it? they can't go to the elite sport, whatever's classed as elite sport events. Mm-hmm. So like they can't go to BSB, they can't go to touring cars, but they will go to the club event car race Which or is, the club event bike race because they're starved of bike so racing. So we'll go and the world is mad at them. Like the other day, I was uh, I've just joined this gym and it's got a little uh, like a swimming pool and jacuzzi and stuff. And I was sat in the jacuzzi with about ten other people, and I was just thinking. Legally, I'm not allowed to go and see my sister, uh-huh. and I'm sat in a jacuzzi, <laughs> like down the, and like this is legal. And I'm just thinking, there's no but like no spectators allowed at BSP, but like yeah. this, and it, oh, it's just madness. But hey ho, we'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we what, digress. What, what, uh, yeah, digress. One other thing I seen the other beautiful new helmet design uh, was it the you looking at helmets again, Chrissy? No, Lobsters no, and helmets. No. This is what you're about. <laughs> Do you know how you and Josh have got such similar helmets? Mm-hmm. Was that a, was that planned? In the in the wet race, we we wore very similar helmets. The blue ones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, so I run, um, I run HJC helmets, and I all my helmets have slightly different helmet designs. Right, the um, Monster Monsters Inc. one was mint. The green one. Yeah, that was a good one. That's, that's, that was a, that's a normal design, and actually this year, so they brought out a Superman one, and I've worn that for a few rounds because I really like it. So they often say, "Oh, will you wear this one? It's a it's a standard Limited design." Edition, yeah. Some of them, they they met, they asked me to wear one a few years back, and actually, me and Emlav had to toss a coin for which one was going to have to wear it, and I lost because <laughs> it's certainly like I'm not into like the Marvel comics and all that, and it was a Venom and something else, and it was just horrible, and you were like, "Oh no." But actually, I wore it, and the comments on the internet and stuff, like, people love it. So it's obviously just a taste thing, and I don't have great taste. However, this Superman one that I'm wearing at the moment, I really like it. Um, Which looks horrendous, by the way. No, I'm I'm joking. (laughs) So is that a standard design? The the Superman one is a standard design, yeah. And it's dead, dead nice, and I've I've just continued to wear it. Um, Because he gets 25%, Chrissy. 30. Sheets. 30. (laughs) (laughs) And um, the... In the my wet helmet design, it just happened to be Josh got this new blue helmet, and my wet helmet was the same color. So it it looks mid to be fair. It just it was just in that race. It looked it looked very very similar. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, uh, all all through when I was motocrossing, like to have your own painted helmet was the be all and end all. Mm. So I remember being a kid motocrossing. All I ever wanted was my own painted helmet and I remember the first time I got one it actually wasn't painted for me my dad bought it off someone else so it was a it wasn't my design or whatever and it was just the best thing I'd ever got and I remember actually crashing um pretty much the first race out and I cracked the peak and I cried all the way home because I'd cracked the peak on this thing but now now that I'm in a position where you can I'm able to have painted helmets I like try and make the use of it so that's why I have different ones because I almost want to have different designs and something slightly different Mm -hmm. I just think it's the most amazing thing Paint Nation. Yeah, I've got them on Twitter. They do some mega ones. Yeah, so. really, really nice. He does a great job. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you have any lucky charms when you go racing? See me, I always Nicholas. I've got to have green. Like, I've got to have green on. Honestly, I don't know why. I just I feel I feel weird without. Yeah. I'm not, which is weird. I'm not superstitious. In anything I walk under ladders and cats across the road, all that crap. But it just I feel uncomfortable. And where did I the green? Have, where did that come from? I don't know. Um, well, my dad. My dad raced like a dad raced spikes and he's always as a joke because he worked he was a civil servant for the forest commission and for a joke it was a running joke he always had a green tree like the forest commission mm-hmm. logo on his lid and unfortunately my dad's had been in some seriously seriously big crashes and i'm very lucky that he's still here and it's just so it's been that ongoing thing that he's always had a green tree on his lid <laughs> ever since what, i've got that... ever since i've got raced i've gone Yep, slap that on. <laughs> but every, everything does stem from somewhere. That's why I ask because everything you say yeah, you're not superstitious, but you're massively superstitious because you've got this thing about the green. J- just, just that though. It's just like that. Like everything else, it can go to tits. But I tell you, I tell you what. Speaking of going to tits, um, I would like to introduce you to someone. <laughs> my my brand new crew chief, who's involved me in motorcycle racing, and I would like you to meet an absolute living legend, Sugar Tits. Sugar Tits, get yourself up here. There you are. So, I would like to introduce you to Sugar Tits. So, Sugar Tits, this is Christian Iden. Now, do you actually have any idea who Christian Iden is? 
let's be let's be honest. Only through the previous podcasts. Oh, you see, hearing that he was the adopted Geordie. There we go. So does he does he live up to the muster here, Sugar Tits? Mm. I haven't got the accent for <laughs> Not yet. I'm not talking so, like a proper one yet, man. We're, we're looking like a budget Ali G and I, Sugar. <laughs> It does look like a boy band over there. The grey, the head, that, that's it. When's the album getting released, boys? When's the album getting released? So there we go. So, yeah, now the reason I want you to meet Sugar Tits is um, now you're, you've come from a motocross, a heavy motocross background. And like you say, where your, your lid's getting sprayed and everything, big, big deal. Now, the last thing this man did that was good and fell out of his ball sack was a British champion. And uh, unfortunately, he smashed his arm up, hasn't he, recently? Uh, yeah. How's the boy getting on? He's all right at the minute. Um... I think it was about three, three and a half weeks ago. How long has he got left on the arm? Mm, I think it's a week and a half left now. Bloody hell, not long uh, then. So, But the mad thing is, so he's done his arm in motocrossing, which is the dangerous side of it. Now, what were you doing on Sunday? Motocrossing. Motocrossing. Now, isn't that a bit close to this weekend coming for the you know it's well, I, I find plan, that incredible I plan to go tomorrow but it's been, I've been rained off honestly that, that, is, yeah. that, that is incredible that is, I admire that right I've got time for that you know risk and reward so you just is it no but you see like we, we were just talking about that previously you know your attitude towards step by step lap by lap situation by situation but I'm not going to lie if I am um, if I'm going to come home and win a championship at British level I wouldn't be motocrossing <laughs> think positively <laughs> Pack yourself. Pack yourself. Well, just because cause I like to ride a bike as often as I can because I think it's I just think it's mint and I think you end up even though I'm not riding on a on a road race bike I think it makes a big difference. You think you get that get to a race weekend almost sort of in the motorbike racing motorbike riding mindset. Mm-hmm. So I, I've I've for uh, for a couple two or three years now I've always tried to go motocrossing on the Wednesday that I leave I tend to leave on a Wednesday afternoon like I am doing tomorrow so I would have gone motocrossing washed the bike jumped in the That's caravan and, Man, and gone do you know you mentioned sugar tits it's just suddenly it was like a what's the word like a eureka moment do you know a couple of ages ago you were talking about woodland treasure like when oh, you find yes, porn in the, in the woods right now, I've have you never seen this? What's you, woodland treasure? Woodland treasure, right, is when you find <laughs> extremely weird things in laybys, woodlands, or on work sites. Now, well, you, we've come from a work background. Mm-hmm. But basically, we, we've uh, at work, they used to find bin liners of porn mags, like ripped up porn mags. And I found a suitcase filled with gimp gear and all sorts. It's been a right <laughs> like, like woodland treasure. But the best thing is, everyone puts the tools down and goes, lads, <laughs> come have a look. What I found over here. And everyone's like, right. Dropped it straight over, and everyone's just throwing around butt plugs and stuff. Like that. Going, this is mint crack. I tell you what, I, I came, I came. Where are you going with this, Chrissy? I discovered some. I'm worrying about this. I just, it's got no it. it's got no, I've discovered some Instagram treasure the other day. Do you know Marco Melandri's misses? Have you ever seen mm-hmm. on Instagram? My goodness me! Have you ever came across? Can you, can you hand me phone over this? Have you ever done what? Sorry, Chrissy. Have you seen <laughs> Marco Melandri's misses? Yeah, you is that have. phone. That is I. For anyone that's listening, if you're wanting a little uh, a treat, get on, I can't remember her name, but ma- go on Marco Melandri's Instagram and uh, check check it out. Eh? <laughs> you, you will, you, you'll thank us later. You'll thank us later. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, sugar tits <laughs> links in my brain and um, just you're the second just part tits. of that. <laughs> 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 oh my good God. But no, so like, um, if you haven't caught up with the last two episodes, I've actually had a go at motocross myself. Now, normally, as every rider, you get an opportunity to defend yourself. And I thought, I'm going to be a little bit different and actually deliver the truth, unlike every other rider and sugarcoat stuff. So I've got sugar tits here pretty much to explain my weekend. I had a go at sand racing, and it's horrendous. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you, have you, obviously, you've raced, and what do you make of sand racing? Like, sand track, should I say? Well, <clears throat> sand, motocross on sand is what I think is the hardest way to go motocrossing. Because it's mint if you ride fast, because you sort of float across the top of the sand. And if you roll off, you just sink, and I'm assuming that's what you've done. Well, here we go. <laughs> this is your shining moment to tell the world how I... Uh, Sunk. Well, <laughs> quite, quite how literally. I got on. How I got on. Way. To be fair, it wasn't that bad. Was it I've down? seen worse. <laughs> so it was... It was... <laughs> 
<laughs> was it Sherwood Forest? I uh, were down at Sherwood Forest, uh, Mansfield area. Right. And uh, did you not get? Did you not enter Dom into the expert class or something? Thank <laughs> no. Damn right, I did. <laughs> No, second uh, time ever. <laughs> second motocross, fifth time ever on a motocross bike. You can't, you'd be eating the experts. You'd be eating. He's going, safest, isn't he? No, that is a good I, point. I, if you look at the riders on the line, the same class, they all just roll round and go on to overtake you. Normally, it's just a throttle jockey chance. B class, they're getting there, but they're still game on taking you clean out. And the experts, you've only got Brad Anderson and Lewis Hall. These are sick, easy. Like, they're, they're, they're easy. Now, hold on. So, right, at this point, he's filled me full of confidence with sweet, sweet lies. I'm thinking, all right, yeah, no problem. Why Why would a friend of mine lie to me, Christian? Why would he lie to me? This is obviously a very... You guys, be all right, man. You'd be all right, mid-pack, mid-pack, no bother. So, obviously, I took that upon myself, and obviously, listening to the show, everyone thinks I don't do any homework. I did a lot of homework. I found out who these names are and who they belong to and all sorts, and pretty much I worked out the difference between a B rider and an A rider is around about 30 seconds a lap quicker. So at this point... And if you're Brad Anderson, a new, newly crowned world champion. Do, do you know how old Brad Anderson is? Go on. 39. He's 40 next year. Is he just He's a world legend. Cha- is he just won the Honest world championship? Man. Yeah. Did he just not just win the two-stroke world championship? Uh, the AMX. Yeah. Uh, Come on, I'll 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 I won't follow it that often unless I'm there on the weekend. <laughs> um, no, I think he. Uh, I'm not sure if there's another round to go. Oh. Yes. We did win the last European, I think, the dawn two meetings in Italy not long ago. And. How how did you find it f- then? F- so you so at the, at, so at this point, so Brad is stand there. His mate, who does loads of like electrical work with, he set up this team like called Team USA. So at this point, this is a team event. Now, what I've discovered is everyone at these motocross events is, in the professional terminology, sandbags. So you've got A lads, sorry, you've got A lads at like northeast club meetings, who have entered in the C's. And then you've got pretty like semi-professionals entering the B's, and then you've got world-class stamp in A class. So at this point, after discovering all these facts, I hit the panic button and began to shit myself, Chrissy. I'm not going to lie. And I talked through every... Now, there's, fi- what, 35 people in the team? Now, explain yeah, there the was mix. four per group on the... Four per group. So mm. explain the classes. So you had 60... Autos. You had your autos, your 65, small wheel 85, big wheel 85... Your rookies, your C's, your B's, and your A's. So you had eight groups. So I started off asking. No, so I had to, so I started off with the sem- sensible situation of where do I think I belong in this. So I asked the first eight-year-old person I could find and asked to be in the sixty-five class. <laughs> At that point, I was still got my arse handed to us, and then worked up the ladder from there. Then I met what was his name, David. Hi, uh, David Softly. David, so- David Softly, if you are listening to us, thank <laughs> God you turned up. So basically, this guy turned up, just wanted a cigarette, so gave the man a cigarette, and we proceeded to swap class after that. And, my God, I did not get chucked in the deep end, Christian. Without armbands, <laughs> nothing. I got my arse absolutely handed to us. And this is this is after announcing to me, dear Gran, right, who doesn't really like me racing motorcycles, she goes, what are you on with this weekend, son? I said, oh, it's a, it's a hell of a weekend, mind. She can't say what's on. I said, I'm racing at international level at motocross. She can't say you're not. I can't. I'm riding for the US of A. <laughs> <laughs> Bearing in mind, his electrician mate just came up with a team name just to take the piss. So <laughs> me grand there thinking I'm an international motocross rider, which is fantastic. So With a new passport. With a brand new passport. That's exactly <laughs> it. So I went off into the... Ra- oh, my God, mate. It was so, so quick. And riding in sand, like... It, you just said, like, if you ride quick, you don't sink. And I sunk on every bit of that track <laughs> ever. And then I proceeded. Now, well, it got soaking and it got rut here and it got wet. Now, the thing I, I, I find amazing about motocross is the concentration level. Now, when you go short circuit or even road racing, you can hit the same bump consistently every lap. You know, the tarmac doesn't change dramatically. Yes, you can have different like surfaces like such as water oil grease uh, whatever but like when you go motocrossing, crossing every time you go into that corner it is a it is never ever the same surprise go, it, 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 it totally is and you just yeah the, that and that reaction time it was totally phenomenal how you were standing 
me, oh, I just I had my body position all wrong, me like language, and all I was as useless as Superman's cape. I was just hanging off the back of this 450, <laughs> going, just go fast, just go fast, and I was just like jump, barely jumping, barely doing this. I was up, so, oh, but I, t- I tell you, it was just absolutely phenomenal to the point I absolutely fuck uh, massively made a mistake, and I only learned this mistake after I injured myself. So it got soaking like it's raining right now. And it's called a dab. And I'm not talking that stupid bloody thing kids do with their arms. <laughs> I put my feet down. My leg got stuck. And the bike proceeded to go forward. So and I, I, I felt like I spent a night with the, the Playboy Mansion. My groin was gone. Like, totally gone. And um, this man here. This man here, Sugar Tits, who's been... You have not competitively raced a motorcycle. It'll be an easy... Hold on, Hayden's Competitively. Well, uh, go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's got, he's got H- Hayden will have been two-year-old or something, so it'll be eight, nine years ago. Eight, nine years ago, and he was on a one, two, five, and he's considerably slimmer. He used to fit in that top. I was going to say, I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just had a bit of battery failure there, <laughs> just as we were discussing Craig's kite. <laughs> just starting to rip into his window. Fatherhood's been good what, to you. <laughs> I tell you what, man, speaking of motocross, I'm, I'm going to have to get my... I'll give you a call. As soon as the season finishes, I'm going to have to get out because uh, I got that KX450 at the beginning of the year and it's, it's had about as much use as Anne Frank's drum kit this year. It's just <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, but uh, I'll be straight out. As soon, soon as Brad's is over, I'll be straight on the phone. You can I, teach us how to ride because I'm not very good. I t- <laughs> this man could because we had to, like, after I uh, knocked me leg, like, uh, we top of me groin there, Sugar tits stepped in for his mate. So after eight years being off a bike, I have. N- I tell you what, what cheered me up to no end is that fire never goes. It seriously doesn't, right? So there's him. So at this point, we're trying to keep it secret. Obviously, we've had a quick, you know, quick chat with the organisers and said, "Look, can we do a quick swap and everything like that? Swap details, blah blah blah. Everything's kosher. Everything's good to go." So he's rolled up on the B grid like that with my lid on that fits. He's got boots, which is a size too small for him. Just and one. I, t- I tell you what, right? That that zip, right, would have killed the next <laughs> man he breathed out on. It was just, it was all together, all together. And so anyway, he's in this gear, right? And all, like, bearing in mind, his wife, right, is straight at the point. His son is even straight at the point. His daughter, Olivia, considerably to the point. I was shit myself about being the ears and they're like, pussy, pussy, soft shine, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Fancy getting on the bike, Craig? Nothing. Deadly, <laughs> quiet, sweat running off him. He's like, that. I'm like, yeah, are you Yeah, shut up, shut up, shut up. He's squeezing these boots in. I'm thinking, oh, it's amazing when the shoe's on the other foot, princess. And so anyway, nerves were kicking in. I tell you, it was funny as hell because I got left totally to myself, right? 100% to myself. I was just pulling up at the grid. Tom Dick and that was who's who's this wanna be? He turns up on the grid. Seven other kids turn up. They're patting out the track. People are massaging him. People are like that going, you've got this Craig, this guy. You've got people coming out the other side of the paddock. You've got dads going, stat on the bike, stat on the bike, sugar tits is going on the bike. So anyway, the, the grid's filled up, man. COVID went out the window. This is the moment in motocross, you know what I mean? Even I think even Brad Anderson got a text gun. LOL, guess who's out? <laughs> so we just pulled up on the grid and I've never seen hunger like it. And the mad thing is, it was looking like, I was looking at an older, fatter version of me going, I'm going <laughs> and I'm going, he's got this. And like, everyone's going, he's got horse shot. He's never been on this bike, right? He's got a load of it from a bloke called Tubbs, which was fitting. <laughs> so we pulled up on the grid, right? And I, mate, it was just arms rolling back getting rolled and it was just like you know the blip on the throttle when you see the pros going boom boom this 450 that he's never sat on <laughs> and he just got on the grid he's had the he's just sitting there head down arse up and i just had full belief that <laughs> this man <laughs> I've never been on a bike in eight years and i just nudged me mate and went He's fucking got this. Like. <laughs> right. I'm glad he had the belief in us. I'll t- tell, tell you what, right? He shot off and I filmed the whole thing. It was unbelievable, right? He's around the first corner. He's over the... T- Bound mind, he's never been around the track, right? First tabletop. Boom, full straight cable stretch. Clears the first one in 10th. And I've got... This is amazing. <laughs> Two laps later, he was a... He was bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he was so, so like, he had on the bike, he was like a ragdoll. And the first 
thing he said to me about motocross. You take them goggles off, Dom. I'm going to slap you, right? <laughs> Two laps in. Sunset no. is, is injured. British Championship sun, right? And he, sh- he just threw these goggles at him, right? He's mid-air and he goes, Num nuts, catch! And throws him at his son. Hawks him at him. And he just went backwards and backwards and backwards. So, fat Dom was absolutely <laughs> crazy. And I just like... And then, you know, when you're like, I've told everyone he's going to win this. And I just solely slunk away in the crowd. You have no idea how proud I am of oh, you. That was, mate, man. We regret them the in, next day. I pulled off the track. I was nearly spewing up. Couldn't breathe or nothing. Just, <laughs> pulled back up at the van. I've undone my pants. I've undone my boots. I'm lit on the floor. <laughs> buckled. He comes up and all that remembers. You're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> but on it, the, but the thing is, though, he just stepped it because it's his mate's team. It's all about getting points. Stepped up to the plate. It was just that immediate hunger. But anyone else would have put, would have just said no, <laughs> nothing, and just the proudness in your son's eyes. Oh, was, mate, that was but, the best thing about it, man. I come back in, and I thought. Oh, he's going to abuse me here. All the times he's come in and I've gone, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I thought, I'm getting both barrels. You know what I mean? And he'd come in, he was like, died on mint there. I thought, thank God for that. (laughs) Everyone else can whistle like. No, no, but honestly, B, like, I I can't, I cannot (laughs) exaggerate how quick this B class was. Like I say, they've they've totally sandbagged through the class and he was in 10th after not being on a bike and that is, but like, do you do any racing? That did only last for about six corners. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. (laughs) No, but it, it was glorious. But like, but where would you put yourself in motocross, like, would you be an you would be an expert, wouldn't you? Would you? Uh, honestly, like, <laughs> I do think they're that fast. It's different going to a little practice track and having a, a bimble around. And basically, it's like going to a track day in it, and you think you're faster, then you actually go race, and you realise how fast people are. So, I was I was pretty quick back in my day, but I'm, I'm under no illusions as to how fast they go now. Just just speaking of motocross, it made us think about the whole shot device. Do you uh, in BSB? Do you run a whole shot? Nah. No, uh, I would like one. Mm, look pretty cool, MotoGP mm-hmm. and stuff. And See, it, I still don't use one at motocross. Do you not? No. Nah. Do you use launch control? No. Nah. I tell you what, the full launch, whiskey. The launch control on the BM is unbelievably good. Like, I've never got to use it. Mm, I know. Never got to use anything stuff. like that. But the but the superbikes don't have them. No, we don't have anything. But the about the whole shot device. It's funny how they now use the whole shot device in MotoGP when they're racing. Yes. Yeah. Have you eh? seen that? It's, have you ever seen it? So it's Ducat- amazing. Ducati have got a system where when oh, they get it, when they get us, drop it, the back end on them. When, when they everything. get to a straight, it- but yeah, and it drops it about maybe 10, 15 mil, but then it makes it more aerodynamic down the straight, and then just before the braking zone, they clip it off and it l- lifts the bike. And but the rider, but, the rider has to physically do it themselves. Yeah. Uh, and they're doing this mid, like mid race. Yeah. Race. So Pecco Bagnaia was the first one I think that they that gave it to properly to test it and make sure it was right, and that's yeah. when he. But then he got injured. But he was, but no, but it was, he was going really, really well until the he... first time I seen it was Sapang, you know, that really long straight, mm-hmm. and they come out that last corner, and then it's like, mm-hmm. and then yeah, mega, mega That's technology. Incredible. Then, yeah. yeah, but they're using, so they're using that device, it's unbelievable to yeah. see. It's been, in, I mean, cars, cars have used that for it's like 20 year old technology in cars, but when it's coming into bikes, it's do you uh, think that'll do you think that eventually get into us getting on the M1? Bump. <laughs> <laughs> do you not think it's taken away from the riders a bit though as well, well that's like the, thing the, the Formula you, 1 as well isn't it it's what, like what the you, amount of controls they've gotten that can change it's all I strategy think, and that I think it's really cool so, with the rules in Superbike BSB especially where it, it is you know not too much electronics um, and it kind of but I don't know it's difficult isn't it because I mean at the end of the day racing in general, is oh, you've still got to be able to ride, you know. It's... Well, progressing like technologies, and then that goes like, for example, ABS. It was developed mm. in racing, and then now everyone driving a car is safer because of it. But it wouldn't. It's all technology from well, racing. When, when MotoGP first went away from that, because they've now got a control ECU in it, and it's it has the racing's so, so much, much better, better mm. since it's had a control ECU. However, that all the teams basically didn't want to run a control ECU because what they want to do is develop their systems, like you were saying, for all their future models yeah and I think in B- racing B- so B- actually it means that they can't develop anything B- new bmw had a huge argument with organizers when yeah. around that time because they purely Dubai. do the racing mm-hmm. to develop stuff to then pass it down into the road uh, into road mm-hmm. technology mm-hmm. so um they can't really justify just doing it just for racing if it wasn't mm-hmm. for that reason but um speaking of touching on motor gp i've seen the results this weekend i didn't actually get to see the have, racing have you watched any of it no nah. 
They Chris, are, Christian's going to be our uh, our go-to person for this one. Well, I watched it on the turbo, so I was also blowing out my backside. So. Mortal GP this weekend was mega. Uh, dodgy conditions in the race, and uh, the championship's really close as well, isn't it? So it's kind of all to play for. Did you guys see any? Uh, no, I just pretty much know that the Yamahas did absolutely nothing. Marquez has pulled his finger well and truly out. Well, Alex Marquez is. Mm-hmm. Now, hold on. Is... Is the Marquez coming back? Nah, they, I think they announced today that he wasn't coming back for this one. Aragon this weekend was supposed to be his return. return. Mm-hmm. That well, would have been interesting. It's, it, it? it's interesting that Honda haven't really given Alex a, f- you know, a, I would say a fair shout, but you know they've obviously replaced him with Paulo Spargo, who's I think he's won one race in like ten seasons or whatever. And uh, it's I mean, funny now, Alex has he won one. It, or I don't has, think he, has he has never has won one? I don't know. I think that is actually that he's never won one, or he, or he's had like a, not he hasn't done extremely well, has he? Bit better than he's saying. been on the same bike yeah. as like Cal, you know Tech Three. He's had some good rides, and he he hasn't really done that much, and he's been given the factory Honda ride. Um, but it's funny that now Alex has sort of get upped his game, and I know dodgy conditions. You you know you can't say too much, but he, Alex Marquez got his first podium, finished was it second? Second, yeah. Did Ka- Crutchlow crash again? Yes, he did. Is he got a ride for next year? Or is that what's all that about? I think the rumor speak? mill is that he's going to Prilia, isn't it? There's not many seats left, is there? Anywhere they're all, all right. well. Aprilia, I think, are waiting to see if Ian Oni's been on drugs or not What's, been on drugs <laughs> he's going to be on drugs but uh, it's Bradley Bradley Smith was on the Aprilia wasn't he and he was flying so he was doing mental literally so Brad, he was, he yeah literally like on this year. because he went to motocross <laughs> didn't he? he he went from MotoGP then he had a double at motocross and then he's gone back again so Who? Bradley Smith I was just doing for training just motocross. Training. Nah, I wasn't training I thought he actually got no. a KTM ride no. Hey, if, nah. if you listen to this show, you'll take what I say. So, yeah, he was yes, riding he did. KTM. You're damn right, yeah. Yeah, he did a fantastic Full job. Yeah, uh, sugar tits passed him on the outside. <laughs> no, but so Brad, Brad Smith was P1 in the first session, yeah. which was amazing. Um, and actually, he was up to about seventh or eighth in the race when he when he crashed. But still, still a mint mint ride, considering his teammate finished just about last, I think, Aleish did. Mm. And uh, obviously Petrucci getting a, another win, which mm-hmm. I think everyone's a Petrucci fan, really. Yeah, it's hard not such, to me. Such a cool, <laughs> such a cool guy. And um, the, to- got- the, the talking point has got to be that Moto2 race. For, for me, it is. I tell you what, you know, you, you know what separates a winner from a championship, like a champion, is is sheer utter class as a human being, in, in my opinion. It's mm-hmm. been more the people's champion. And you could just see Dixon's reaction and the, how the whole world almost reacted to that. Some people, you know, especially around Blade, would go to soft shade. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, like, is what it means to him and his reaction. Oh, I thought you were it, talking about Lowe's. <laughs> no, 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 but look, no, Lowe's. Lowe's deserved that win. He Like, he made him, how he saved that front end crash. <laughs> that was, if, that if was you haven't biggie. seen the sugar tits, he just went straight, full lock break, full side. Smoke break, and everything. Smoked a lot. And you think, how on earth have you saved that sub? Fair play, of mine. Mm. But he was reeling him in. But more importantly, I think what impressed me as far as him being able to keep his job is how um, Dixon reacted to his pit boards. He full on responded. He full on responded. It he, was really impressive. Lowe's reeled him in from nearly a two second gap. Da, 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 da. And the thing about Lowe's is once he gets a reaction in the fact of going, well, I can go catch this guy, he can get a sniff and he normally can do it. But Dixon reacted brilliantly he just went from point A to 1.2 and then I don't think there's anyone that can flipping do anything but feel for Jake mm. after that he's had, he, he's had a hard time since he went to Moto2 but this he, year especially he's made some but he, he had such a hard time and but then he never seemed to lose his composure he sort of went a bit quiet on the job but sort of went about it carried on going about his business mm-hmm. he was I'd say he's very fortunate that he was given the opportunity to carry on because we've seen so many people that haven't you know like even the last person that got half an opportunity was Taz McKenzie and there's there's nothing to say that he wouldn't have then progressed on to you know to great to great things it's just it's obvious that those bikes you have to well like any bike but those bikes you seem to have to ride in a certain way and it's not it's not a quick fix it's not like you jump on them you see all the Moto3 guys they jump on and most of them are dead last for most. There's only Aaron Cannett really that's a, been able to in the last few years jump on a Moto Two bike and actually be quick from the off. And I think there's obviously a big question between who's going to get the Petronas ride between Dixon and McPhee. And I think Dixon's definitely putting his a big you know stake. His, his last several races, he's just gone. He's gone from like you just said from a difficult start. To, he's just gone. 
there to there. It's almost like he's had a, a like a gypsy's warning going, look, son. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, yeah, with yeah, that, with that, you better pull your finger out. With that class, even if you look, you know, if you're thirtieth, it's you're like one of the best riders oh, in the world. 100%. And oh, oh no, on oh, no, definitely not taking that away from. But that, mm. oh god, because he he just pushed that little but bit the, too much on the front. The, didn't the he? thing with McPhee to me brings up another a slightly separate issue in terms of like. Obviously, everyone's wanting John to move on, and he's been in Motor 3 for a long, long, long time. I've not spoken to John for a while, so I don't know if he wants to move up or oh, doesn't. Oh, but, oh, name dropping there? No, I'm, but... I'm pallying with John McPhee. No, all, <laughs> it, all it is is, like, you sort of get forced to always have to progress. And, like, if your own, if your goal is to be Motor 3 world champion, I don't see why you should have to be forced to move on to something. Yeah, that's you know, like that's if, all, if all you want to do is be Motor 3 world champion, that, that to you is... The biggest and best thing, and that's absolutely fine. So I don't see why you have to be forced into the next that's, one up. That's definitely a thing that's changed in racing from you know like a while ago. Because for example, you used to have like two fifty riders, and like it uh-huh. would, you would your class would be the two fifties, yeah. and it it wasn't a stepping stone to the big class. Like mm-hmm. you were a two two fifty specialist. Where it, I, I understand what you're saying with with John, but at some point, you know, you, for me. I mean, you, ev- you everyone's got like, for example, yeah, Cecchinello was was just a always a little bike rider. You know, you used to get all those right ri- certain riders that their body shape or what style. they wanted to do, style, whatever, would suit a certain bike. Um, I don't see why you would have to. I just think it's sad that it's always it's almost like it's undervalued. So now those lower classes are seen as like stepping stones almost. So yeah, you win it. Now you have to move on. Mm. Where, not, whereas that could be the be all and end all for you if you want to win Moto Three and that's what you want to. I, I think yeah. it's almost, I, I, it's I, I almost a shame. Mean, but you look at like the Jonathan Ray situation. <laughs> yes, he had that. He had a very unfortunate, but a rare opportunity to go into that Moto GP class. And yes, the story is that he was told not to crash and everything like that, and he he could have made something off that. But you know. That's the thing. We're a nation of... Un- that, this is my argument. We're a nation of underdogs. And quite frankly, we don't like seeing people do well. That's true. You know, it's, it is, it, no, it is. Mm-hmm. And you think, all oh, right, you, you think, oh, mint, mint, mint. When when he hopped off the Honda and hopped on a Kawasaki, he was like, yeah, Jonathan Ray. And it's like, you know, how many times has he won it now? You know, but, just, but what you just said then about and, Johnny is also... It, it sort of works out for that one because so many people are desperate for Johnny to move into MotoGP. Yeah. Whereas actually... He's clearly quite happy doing what he wants, what doing what he does. He's getting the cheddar in so, the pocket, yeah, and he's so off winning races. <laughs> I actually, I actually respect and admire the fact he's going. Nah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy do- here. Yeah, I want to be world two bike champion, and that's his out. He doesn't need feel the need. Maybe he hasn't had the opportunity, but he also doesn't feel the need so much to really go chasing a MotoGP ride or championship <laughs> challenge. Like, and I kind of respect that. Yeah, I suppose it, there's always that pressure to step up in any su- yeah. succession. Like you, I do. But does that happen even in motocross? So it's a bit. D- there, you are. I'm going back to the motocross subject. But does motocross? Sorry, because I've got a, a fixation on motocross at the moment. I do apologise, Chrissy. <laughs> but does it? Does power class matter really in that? Because to me, I had no idea. Yeah, I you've didn't got know. your MX1, MX2, haven't you? No, I mean power. So through. hopping over a one two five on a four fifty. Does it? Well, like, there's does that, a massive difference. No, but not just in the bike characteristics. But I saw lads in the A group <clears> who were just as fast on a one two five. Hi. As they were in a four fifty. Now, if that was road racing or tarmac, that just just does not happen. When you look at lap times, no. it's all about power, 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 power. But in motocross, that's where the big difference is. Uh, different circuits as well, isn't it? So You've got much more chance there. to ride a two fifty F and a four fifty at similar speeds, aren't you? Whereas I on a road bike, like you said, a six hundred against super bike, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to race them together. No, not at all. But Wait, they've just. Um, <clears throat> Change the rule on running a 252 stroke in with the 250F now for right. your MX2, which is how, from what you used to class it as, you had your 252 stroke was equivalent to your 450F, your four stroke. Yeah. And the 105 was the equivalent of the 250F. We obviously, the four strokes are that advanced now. The 250 is as quick as the 252 stroke. So they've allowed the 252 stroke to run it. MX2 together now. Bloody hell. <laughs> so, obviously, 450s is like your elite, your MX1. Mm. But so. is, is two strokes dying in motocross? Because it's died out. Is that, is that they did a little bit, but they're coming back now. They're coming, coming back. Because in time. our sport, let's be fair, that they're, well, you don't see any. They're not in MotoGP. They're not a world superbike. They're just they've just dwindled off into the past, haven't they? Well, no, they're coming. In, motocross. They're coming back in a big way. 
big, big way. There's cool. a lot of it nostalgia as well, yeah. like because when I, I I read the 450 for a bit, and then I jumped back on the 125, and I had so much more fun riding the 125. From the moment firing it up, it you just smile. Cause it, you, and then when you pull off, you're just still smiling. And while you're riding around, you've got a big <laughs> cheesy grin on your face. And you you can just hear it singing all the time. So, speaking of motocross, after the season finishes, have you got any, uh, like, I presume you'll be training motocross, but bike racing-wise, have you got anything planned for the rest of the year? My dad sent me a screenshot yesterday, actually, for Mete, which is a big, was a massive super motor event. Uh, it's nowhere near as big as it ever was. Is that the... But like, it's mid-November. Is that the same time as the Western Beach Race? Now, is that the what? street race to do? Yeah, street I, race. I, 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 Shane, I, Shane was telling us about I, that. I'm, I'm desperate. I'm desperate. It's to amazing. Do that. Absolutely amazing. How, how, do, how, how I want to do it. Tell, tell everyone about this. You, you you've jumped into so, it now. Uh, Mete was is basically the mecca of supermoto. So it's run on a road racing circuit in Belgium, um, and it's just mint. So it's basically that it was the be-all and end-all. Supermoto was invented or thought up so that at the end of the season they would get motocross riders and road racers together in like an end-of-season bash and see who's the best. It's basically what where it started from. Really? Yeah. Um, and Mete is probably the biggest event in the Supermoto calendar. Now, they then went and built a proper circuit at the circuit... Yeah. At, at this road venue and it sort of died a death a little bit because it was rubbish so the whole point of Mete is it's on this really like it's just on the Nadry streets hot, yeah. yeah it's on the streets like turn one you it's round a pub and then you go round the roundabout and you know backwards up the one way street and then into the farmer's field and back again it's Mete is just a mint event and you, the names that have been involved in that event over the years is, is enormous and it's it did sort of go away a little bit but it's the last two or three years they've put it back onto the street circuit so it's back to the proper circuit and it's sort of gaining a bit of momentum again is this is this an invite event or is this a no so well i want to know how i can do it that's what i've send never your entry off right but well, my suit you haven't got a spare suit of motorbike i've never done a suit of motor event so i best <laughs> learn is it jumps is it jumps and everything yeah but they're pretty they're all right yeah ask him about me there's no sound again. you're all right there's no sound i'm 100 there then. no i definitely want to do it so you're not I'll... seen down at side. No. Shane was down there the other week. He done a race meeting there. Look. Little George, he done one on his eighty five as well. Oh my god, I can imagine them being you, absolutely. You shit come down and you, you know af- where pit lane is. Mm-hmm. You come out, and you go down towards where the motocross track is. You loop round, and as it loops round to come back, you go off road there and then swing a left and then come back down on to the back right hand corner to go down the back straight. What you see, what I find amazing about Sukumoto is the fact of like the commitment in the next turn. Now if if I ran off track at a Cadwell Park or whatever, he went through the gravel trap, I'd be very conscious about there's dirt on me tires and just getting that immediately off. You Sukumoto lads they do that yeah. get used to Do it. they not do that in Crawford <laughs> where they go off track and do some jumps and stuff and then come or is that, or is that rallying and then they come back on the top. Yeah, yeah, we've used rally a rally cross, cross, cross track at Croft yeah. before. Yeah, I've yeah, raced at Croft good. Supermoto before. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd love to do that. <clears> so but they're that's a different seating that. position as well, aren't they? Them Supermotos compared to your road bike. Totally different. So as you're leaning the bike over, you've got more control over that slide on the bike, I think, personally. Oh, okay. No, well, we'll oh. have to do that. That's next on the bucket list. Mate, Cheers, there is. No, no, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm a hook. Like, this is over eight cans of Magnus on an evening, and I'm like, I'm doing this. The last, the last time des- I done Mete was 2013, I think it was. But that was on the, the, the newly built circuit. It was, it was rubbish. How much? W- back on the, back on the proper circuit is proper, honestly. And the, oh, like the crowd to the start finish straight. There's um, there's a pavement, but it's it's exactly the the right height for your handguards. So you can actually clip people's toes because their toes sort of fit under the under the railing, and you can like rub your handguard against people's toes. And then, like I said, the first corner you go round, you go round a pub, so everyone's just hanging off, and they they allow you right next to the track. So there's you can you could basically if you wanted to, you could sort of like chuck your paint. <laughs> yeah. Mint. Well, if, if if any spectator put the hand out, they they'd slap you around the head. That's how close it is. It's mega. Really, really I'm proper. I'm, God, I, I can't wait for COVID. We're coming over to watch you in November. I'm no, coming. Do it. No, I'm doing it. it. I'm doing it. No, it's, it's, a pro- from, it's always has been a proper. It's been a proper inclusive event. So basically, just take two, three hundred riders or whatever it is. There's no real like entry criteria. You just rock up. You qualify in whichever group you qualify in. And then that's it. You go racing. Oh my God, I can't it's wait. Mint. I can't wait for COVID to piss off. Mm-hmm. But there we go. So go on, Chrissy. What, what's, what's, 
I think we've just been rambling on about shite, yeah, and that's was, the best thing about chasing the race. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> I was, I was going to just wrap things up and just say, um, obviously, going into the final round, whatever happens this this weekend, I think you've had an unbelievable season. Obviously, Definitely. consistent staying on the bike, got your first race win. You've uh, you've shown everyone exactly what you're made of, and I really hope that the weekend goes goes as you would as you hope. And uh, hopefully next time we're, when you come back for the fourth time, it would be nice <laughs> if we're going to have two championship trophies sat here. But uh, yeah, honestly, all the best. And uh, thanks thanks to our Ali G. <laughs> <laughs> we're going on. Oh, by the way, do you know, have you ever seen the Ali G interview with the FBI? It's the oh. funniest thing ever. He's, so he sits down and he goes, so Back like... Back to talking shite. Yeah, he says, so like... Um, what uh, he says so like how how did you get your job with the FB and the guy's like so I, I got my job with the FBI and he goes ah <laughs> and then he keeps doing it and he keeps going at the FB and then the guy goes FBI and he goes ah <laughs> it's so funny but um no so, I just, <laughs> oh, no, I'll tell you what that was the most professional you know leaving of an interview ever so obviously good luck and everything like that and uh, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen the FBI shit so there you just go the so, remain there we go so <laughs> Obviously, right. well, before we go, would you would you like to say anything? I feel like I'm like a teacher at a schoolyard. Would you like to say anything to this man? <laughs> well, I would know. Like, it's, it's exactly the same sentiment. I mean, exactly. Yeah, Chrissy's chasing a dream as well. So it's flipping. There's a it's a big weekend coming up. So happy days. Just my fingers crossed. It big goes weekend well for, for Geordie for Land. Us. But I would just like to say, whatever you two do is nothing compared to what this man did on the weekend. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So you know, doesn't matter how big your trophies are or how many girls hang off yet, you've got nothing on the sugar tits yet <laughs> at all. So I'm just, I'm, I thought we'd invite him here to diffuse the tension. You know, there's no real pressure because you're not going to amount to that. <laughs> <laughs> But no, obviously, well, th- thank you very much, lads, for Perry you're coming on yet again. Obviously, we'll get you on for a fourth time. And uh, yeah, big, big do, you want, do you want my bank details now? Or what? <laughs> big oh, thanks to our patrons <laughs> and a big thanks to our sponsor, Colchester Kawasaki. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you soon. Take care, lads. Right. Cheers. See you in a bit. Nick, buy, deliver with the two time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.